Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, it seems like in the last year it's become obvious that AI is coming for all of our jobs, including mine. And today I'm going to test out how good that AI is at giving game development advice. If you've never heard of it before, ChatGPT is the future. People are saying this will replace Google, which we got honestly good riddance. Google has gone been down the toilet for the last several years. And on top of that, probably Stack Overflow. You can ask it questions, it gives you some very good answers. Now I'm going to check out just how good those answers are. We're going to ask it 10 different game development related questions. I'm going to give you my thought on what the answer should be, uh, and then we'll see how well it matches up. Now, we're also going to probably get a lot of uh, technical issues. It's very problematic at this point in time, so bear with me if that happens. And we're going to start off with an obvious question. Which game engine is the best? Now, I've said this in so many videos on this channel. There is no best game engine. It is a subjective answer. If anyone ever tells you that X is better than Y, the person who told you that is probably an idiot. So let's see if ChatGPT is an idiot or not. So what game engine is the best? The best game engine depends on individual needs and preferences. Some popular ones include Unity, Unreal, Godot, CryEngine, Havoc, and Amazon Lumberyard. Okay, so first off, the answer is good. Uh, the uh, It comes down to there is no real best. I agree with that 100%. And then it kind of falls on its face a bit. It hit the big three, in my opinion, for popularity. Unity, Unreal Engine, and Godot. CryEngine is still relevant. Havoc isn't a game engine. Uh, and Amazon Lumberyard doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it is now O3DE. Now, one of those things about ChatGPT is its knowledge base is a year to two years out of date. Uh, it, possible. Uh, so that is sort of understandable on the last one. Uh, if you do not know, Havoc is a physics engine. That answer is just wrong. So you're going to see this technology is by no means perfect yet, uh, but as kind of a, a setting the benchmark, it, it answered about how I expected on the first sentence, and its suggestions were about half good, half complete crap. All right, so let's see something a little bit more specific. What is the best game engine for creating AAA games. Now, this is a more fair question because in, in once you start specifying domains, then there is such a thing as a best. The answer should probably come back as Unreal Engine, to be honest. Now, you can create AAA games in other game engines. Other things it could potentially mention are CryEngine as well, possibly Unity, but that would be a bit of a mistake. So let's see what it does. So... Unreal Engine. Okay, good job there. Uh, it has nailed that one there. Other options include Unity and CryEngine. You know what? I, I like this answer. I think it's uh, not misleading you in any way. Of the major engines available, if AAA is your focus, then definitely Unreal Engine does make the most sense. So I do like the answer it gave us here. I, I would call this one a win. So let's do uh, a more narrow down. Other than Unity or Unreal, what, or sorry, which is the best game engine available. Now this is, again, it should respond with, there's, each one has its own strengths and weaknesses, but I'm kind of interested in seeing what list of secondary results it gives us. Um, so there's some out there like Coco, so I wouldn't mind seeing Godot obviously in there, Game Maker Studio. Um, okay, these results, not that in impressive to be honest again havoc isn't a game engine lumberyard doesn't exist anymore so really all we added uh was game maker studio so i'm going to throw an impromptu question in here what game engines are ideal for creating 2d pixel art style games And here, in the case, I would like to see it, uh, like, Construct could potentially come in there, Game Maker, oh, Construct made it, Stencil, Pico, Phaser, okay, good choices here, I'm, I'm impressed with this result there, uh, all decent recommendations, so I think it did a pretty good job there. Now, I'm going to ask it a very specific question, because the answer to this one should just straight up be Unity, uh, for a very good reason. I want to create... A CRPG. So first I want to find out if it knows what a CRPG is, which if you don't know is a computer role-playing game. Uh, in the style of Pillars of Eternity, which game engine should I use? Now, the reason why this is a bit of a loaded question is I know Pillars of Eternity was developed using the Unity game engine. So giving it that uh, little bit of data, let's see if it's smart enough to know this. Oh, it knows what a computer role-playing game is, which is nice. You can consider using Unity or Unreal Engine as both are vers versatile and capable of handling complex... Uh, da, 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 and now it's telling you it's hard. I don't like that answer. Now, if I ask the exact same question again, like it should be aware that Pillars of Eternity was created using the Unity game engine. So let's see... Okay, it's giving me the exact same results, I think. Hmm. Okay, I'm disappointed by this one because it should have known this piece of information. Let's actually find out if it does. What game engine was Pillars of Eternity 
created with. Okay, so it knows this, but it didn't suggest it in its suggestion. That is an interesting factoid. Uh, I give this answer, the answer is fine, uh, but I would have liked to have mentioned that it actually it was created using a specific game engine because it is aware of this fact. But again, I'm, I'm impressed that it knows this. Let's see how much it knows about more proprietary games. What games were created using the Frostbite engine? And this one's been used for a lot of things. Uh, they use it for making the FIFA games. They use it for making Battlefield series. Okay, yeah, they did a good job there. Definitely good answer on just straight knowledge type questions. This is the kind of thing that you would generally search for, and this is better than searching in my opinion. Now let's go for some other uh, kind of advice stuff here, especially if you were starting out. What programming language should I learn if I want a career as a game programmer and I will correct language that's literally the word I spelled the most Ooh, I spelled programmer wrong that's depressing all right so let's go check this one out I think the answer should obviously be uh, C++ C sharp and then after that it gets a little iffy uh, Python Lua are also good options there as second or third kind of on the list I want to see C++ and C sharp probably as number one and number two here uh, and then I'm interested to see what secondary suggestions it gives Okay, good answer there. Let's see if it gets C-sharp next. Yep, well done there. Python third. Okay, so I got to say, it kind of nailed this one out of the park, uh, and then it fell on its face. Uh, a knowledge of programming languages, technology, oh no, and technology such as DirectX and OpenGL. Okay, so that's, that's fair. Uh, actually, let's see how knowledgeable it is of uh, SDKs in general. What game development SDKs are the most important? Now, that's a very arbitrary thing. Um, but let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so it's calling Unity and Unreal Engine SDKs, which was a fail. Uh, DirectX and OpenGL and Steam, sure. Havoc, Bullet, and Physics, sure. Uh, Middleware, sure. Uh, it did a good job there, except for the fact that it called Unity and Unreal Engine SDKs, which is uh, definitely a fail. But if you were actually asking this as a Google question, I would say 7 out of 10 on the answer there. Not a bad job. Now let's see for the artist side of things. What software should I learn if I want a career as a game artist? Now, what I, it's obviously the answer should be you know, Max Maya, possibly Blender, and then it'd be uh, honorable mention if it gets into some of the sculpting stuff, such as ZBrush, and it mentions some of the um, texturing applications, such as, say, um, uh, uh, what the heck is the name of it? The Adobe one, uh, Algorithmic uh, Substance Painter, Substance Designer. Uh, so let's see what it comes up with here. So again, I want to see Max and Maya for sure. If you want to get a job, those are probably the two most important. Okay, I didn't even think about 2D. Not a bad there. Max Maya Blender, good job there. Texturing, Quixel, and Substance Painter. Interesting that Armor Paint got in there. Concept Art. Okay, this this was a very, very solid answer. I'm actually impressed with everything there. I'll even accept the answer under uh, the two game engines here for level design. So I think they nailed this one out of the park. If you were looking for advice as a like an aspiring artist for game development, this is a very good answer. So let's check out um, a bit of a repeat from before, but I want to create a pixel art game. What software and game engine should I use? Now, we actually already asked this for uh, the game engine earlier on where it gave us uh, decent suggestions, including things like Construct and Phaser. I want to see what it did with the software on this one. Ask Sprite, uh, Graphics 2, yeah, not bad. Tiled for Maps, yeah, not bad. Um, game Maker Studio as a game option, Unity and Godot for 2D game. I like this answer. Uh, not as broad, but again, you could just do a follow-up question if you're looking for a very specific 2D game engine or specific tools. So I'm I'm very solid on there. So let's go about for an audio side of things. What software is used to create audio in game development? Now this could go down a couple different tracks. It could read that and recommend things like W Weiss and FMOD, uh, which definitely are um, their middleware used for game audio. Uh, I'd like to see what else it offers here. So. Um, Pro Tools, that kind of stuff. DAWs uh, would be interesting to see if it covers them. Uh, but let's see where it goes with this one. So FMOD middleware, that makes sense. W Weiss, again, makes sense. Pro okay, so it nailed the three that came to the top of my head immediately. Uh, Cubase, Audacity, yeah, not really falling down on any. Uh, let's see a little bit more specific. Uh, what are some ideal 
DAWs for creating audio for games. See, if it, first off, see if it knows what a DAW is, and then I pluralized it. So digital audio workstation, by the way. Okay, so bang, it knows its acronyms well. Okay, so that is an, that is definitely a fail there. FMOD and WYs are not DAWs, not even close to DAWs. Uh, so then Pro Tools, Cubase, oh, and that's that's all it's offering. Okay, so it's very minimal in its its offer because there's there's a ton. It could offer us up uh, Reaper. It could offer us up um, just uh, not immediately coming to me, but I've covered about ten of them on my channel. Uh, and it's only really showing two. Now, two are the most popular, but only two. And then two fails. I would actually call this answer a bit of a fail, if I'm honest. Uh, so let's go. I do not know how to program, but I want to create games. What software should I use? Now, in this case, it could go uh, for kids. You could do things like... Um, Oh, Alice, uh, and then we've got things like Stencil, Construct, um, a variety of things. Basically something with like a visual programming interface or a building box style approach. Uh, so let's see what suggestions it gives us here. Visual scripting, okay, so that, that is a good suggestion. Construct 3, good suggestion. Uh, Stencil, good suggestion. Game Maker Studio, good suggestion. Yeah, not bad. Uh, again, it's not offering us a ton of different options, but the options that are offering us are quite relevant. And the supplementary advice is actually pretty good too. Uh, basically, you know, you may want to learn programming if you want to create games. I would agree with that general advice. But I think the answers it gave you are as good as you're going to get from Search Engine, and we're better because Search sucks these days. Uh, so yeah, that's not bad. And then I want to create games, but I only want to use open source software. What options are there? So there are a ton of open source game engines. Obviously, it's going to suggest Godot here. Uh, it doesn't seem to know that O3D exists, so I don't think it's going to be suggested. I wonder if it will suggest things like Blender, or Audacity, uh, and the various different uh, pixel options out there that are open source. So let's see where it goes with open source suggestions. So yeah, the Godot engine got suggestion number one, which again makes sense. LibGDX, Solid. I don't know why that didn't make it into my framework. Uh, Unreal Engine 4 is... Uh, well, okay, you know what? I was going to call it a, a fail, but it actually came out and said that it's source available. Uh, Unity is definitely a fail, but at least it explained how it is a fail. So it's not really telling me um, the specifics of what I'm looking for. But if I said, I want open source graphics software for creating games, what options are there? So this should be able to pick up them. Now, I wonder if it'll get something like Krita or GIMP. Yeah, okay, got, got, got the GIMP. Uh, Blender 3D, Inkscape Solid in there. Let's see if Blender gets mentioned. Yep, okay. So you're going to sometimes have to drill in and ask more specific questions. Uh, it, it seemed ChatGPT used to give more like seven or eight or nine options. Now they seem to be narrowing it down to just a handful. Um, but again, not a terrible, terrible answer. Now let's finish things off with a completely subjective question and see what it what it actually does with it. What is the easiest game engine to learn? And I actually I don't know where it would come up with this. So yeah, okay, good, solid here in terms of there's no strict answer. But construct three, not a bad choice. Stencil again. So it, it seems to be pulling from the same bit of knowledge because there's definitely great options out there that it's not getting things like uh, Microsoft Make Code. Um, and again, things like um, Scratch. Scratch never got mentioned, which I find a little shocking, but not terrible answer on the whole. And then what you'll find uh, as my bonus final question is if you ask it something a little bit on the negative side, it just isn't going to do it. So for example, uh, what game development community has the most obnoxious fans? And what you will find is, I do not have opinions or personal experiences, and, not, and it is not appropriate to label fans of any game development community as obnoxious. <laughs> so uh, it's, there are definitely certain areas where you're not going to get an answer, and honestly, those places are where it shouldn't do an answer. So if we go through everything, but by the way, I'm absolutely amazed we didn't get any server timeouts here. Uh, of all the questions I asked, this one gave exactly the answer I'd expect is basically, once again, if anyone ever tells you that an engine is the best with no qualifiers on that, uh, don't listen to that person's advice for anything ever. So they did a good job on their initial response. Good, 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 decent, bad, bad.
So uh, not the perfect answer in that regard. Uh, this one here, it, bang on, good answer. Uh, this one here, um, solid answer until they got down to, again, oops, I did not mean to do that. A solid answer until they got to Havoc and Lumberyard again. And some of that is their knowledge is out of date. And some of it is apparently they don't know what Havoc is because it's not a game engine. It's a physics engine. Uh, Fixel Art answer, solid across the board. I like this answer straight up. This one I would have liked if it mentioned this little bit of knowledge um, right here. Uh, it knew it. It just didn't say it. So the answer should have been Unity. Uh, and the answer should have been Unity or Unreal Engine. But again, I would have loved to have seen it actually tell me that that particular game was created using that engine in the response. It did do that. It did nail this one. This is just straight up perfect answer. So that one's a 10 out of 10. Uh, programming language, again, it nailed this one perfectly. Even its supplemental advice is solid. I like that one as well. This one, not so great. Uh, here and here are bad. But solid otherwise, I'd give that one a 7 or 8 out of 10. Software should I learn for a career? I would say that this one basically is perfect advice, to be honest. Uh, pixel art game, again, solid. I wouldn't have minded more options, but again, you could follow up for that one. Uh, this one, again, very good answer. Uh, this one, uh, fail uh, on the level that these two are not DAWs. These two are solid answers and probably answer number one and two for this question. So not bad, but you just if you didn't know what you were doing, these two answers would throw you off. Although the, the follow-up explanation here that it is middleware it's fair so it's answering your question with invalid data but it's telling you in the answer that its data is invalid so that kind of offsets it a little bit uh this one bang on good advance good answers and good follow-up advice as well uh entirely open source solid answers until you get to here but again so they're answering your question with details that you didn't ask for. So if you're looking for a very specific answer, so you already knew and your criteria was there, uh, I don't want it to suggest something like Unreal Engine, but at least it is telling me it's not open source and that it is source available. So I'm not going to punish it for that one. I'd say about 8 out of 10 on that answer. Solid answer here. Um, solid answer here as well. Uh, and then it's funny that it can't answer that one at all. Uh, and I'm not going to give you my opinion on that one either. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the future that you are looking at. This is going to replace search engines. And to be honest, I think that you would get your answers faster using ChatGPT than you would do if you were using Google and trying to navigate the mess of awful search results you get these days. Uh, so I think it's already a win in that regard. Even if you don't really fully understand the answers, you don't fully understand the results that Google are giving you and you're not getting 6,000 sponsored answers and SEO black hat game stuff, at least not yet. So in terms of uh, versus Google, I would honestly recommend if you're a new person, you probably want to start with ChatGPT for your initial questions. It did a solid job, but as you saw all the way across the board, it did not do a perfect job. Uh, so the future AI, it will take my job eventually, but it just means my job is going to be something different. Maybe I'll be uh, the ask chat GPT guy in the future. Let me know what you think of these answers, of this technology, of the future of, uh, like, I think honestly, the two people that need to worry the most about this are Google, and it's long overdue that they got competition, and uh, Stack Overflow. Now, interestingly enough, though, this depends on all of the websites that it's going to replace for feeding it its data. So once its data source goes away, I don't know how this is going to be that viable. So it's kind of a funny chicken murdering the egg scenario chat GPT is creating, and we'll see how that turns out. But the truth of the matter is Google and SEO and search and all that are killing the web anyways. So this is just one step forward. And I think this is a better, a, a better experience than using Google, but I'm curious what you think. And that's it. Artificial intelligence on game development. I uh, hope you found that interesting. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.